This is the greatest late night TV set in history. The only country that really worries me is uh, the country of Germany. I don't know if you guys are history buffs or not, but uh, <laughs> I say in truth, I love you. Oh my God. If you're an avid fan of stand-up comedy, you would know that for a long time, most comedians always had a goal of getting on a late-night television show, not only for the TV credit, but also because it would allow the comedian to get their act in front of millions of eyeballs and increase their exposure and brand worldwide. Given the competitive landscape of the comedy universe, only the best of the best comedians would get to appear on late-night talk shows. We've seen some of the greatest and most memorable performances in the world on some of these late-night programs, such as Charles Grodin's appearance on Letterman, Bill Burr's appearances on Conan, Rodney Dangerfield's appearances on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. However, there's one performance that stands out above all the rest, and that's Norm Macdonald's set on Late Show with Letterman. Not only was Norm Macdonald the last comedian to ever perform stand-up on Letterman, but we got to see a sentimental side of Norm that most of his fans were completely caught off guard by. In addition to that, this set would quickly become one of the most talked about stand-up comedy sets of all time because of not only how great it it was, but what the moment itself meant to the world of comedy and to Norm himself. If you would like to know why this was such an impactful and important comedy set for the world of stand-up comedy, then you've come to the right place. I will be discussing exactly that, and also how comedians reacted to this set, and how it brought such a stoic and collected man like Norm Macdonald to tears. To begin with, it's impossible to talk about Norm Macdonald without mentioning the massive impact that David Letterman had on him at a young age when he was just starting to become interested in comedy. I'm going to give you a quick back story really quickly, so stay with me. When Norm started stand-up comedy, he had an immense talent that people caught on to very quickly. Within six months of starting his career in comedy, in 1985, Norm would appear on Just for Laughs in Montreal, Quebec in 2006, which for many decades was an incredibly coveted comedy festival with some of the most powerful network executives and talent scouts in attendance. The type of people who could make one phone call and change your life as a performer forever. And Norm was performing for these people with less than a year of experience. To say that Norm advanced in his comedy career quickly would be an understatement. Just five years later, in 1990, Norm would then appear on Star Search, and then shortly after this, he would make his television debut on none other than Late Night with David Letterman. Norm would bring the heat and show the world just how funny he really was, and David Letterman would see something in Norm that was truly special. Dave would go on the record many times to say that if they could have, they would have had Norm on the show every week. This was the beginning of a truly special mentor slash student relationship, similar to the one that David Letterman had with Johnny Carson when he was coming up. Dave never had anything short of extraordinary to say about Norm Macdonald, and this made Norm incredibly happy because he would express many times over his long career how Dave was one of his heroes. Pretty emotional time, wasn't it? No, Letterman, uh, uh, I think Letterman, like, he was my hero, but I think he was everybody's hero. He changed the way people talk in America, and, uh, you know, he really, he really helped me when uh, other people didn't like me. And he would even go on to say that Dave is the greatest late night talk show host who ever lived. We all know that David Letterman was the greatest talk show who, uh, host who ever lived. But I... So to have one of your idols talking so highly of you and your dedication to your craft must have felt truly incredible. Now that we have established the backstory for Norm and Dave's admiration for one another, we can hop into the events leading up to Norm's last set on Letterman. After many years go by, in April 2014, David Letterman announced he would be retiring from Late Show at CBS on May 20th, 2015. People would then start to ruminate about who the final stand-up comedian would be to appear on Letterman, and it was, you guessed it, Frank Stallone. No, but Norm Macdonald would be selected to make the final stand-up comedy performance on the show. Knowing how much Dave's opinion meant to Norm, he would take this opportunity incredibly seriously and write and perform for hours and hours on end to sharpen up the perfect late-night comedy set in his eyes. Unbeknownst to the world, in 2015, Norm Macdonald would have been privately battling cancer for around four years at this point, so the stakes were even higher to him than the fans would know of. One of the best recounts of Norm working on the last Letterman set was from Mark Normand and Joe List, 
Post on the Tuesdays with Stories podcast. In this snippet, they talked about how they witnessed Norm make an appearance at the Comedy Cellar in New York City in the weeks leading up to the final set on Letterman. They talk about how when Norm popped into the Comedy Cellar to practice his set list, that every single comedian who was at the club just piled into the room so they could see Norm MacDonald go up and perform. He goes on, and how do you describe that set we saw at the Comedy Cellar? That set was magic. Magical. First of all, I love that this happens in the cellar. All the comics come down and pile in. Yes. And there's only a few places. It's a very small club. So there's only a few places you can go. And they, the, I love that the club, they recognize how much we love comedy and a special moment where they go, everything's off limit. Yes. Everything, everything's out the door. Cram as many comics as we can here. The Comedy Cellar is known for having legends drop in all the time, like Louis C.K., Jerry Seinfeld, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, but all of those guys drop in regularly and live relatively close. However, Norm is a very rare drop in at the Comedy Cellar because he lives in Los Angeles, California, so every comedian in town knew they were witnessing something truly special. I'll let Joe and Mark talk about their experience about watching the set in person. He did not disappoint. No, no, he brought the heat, he did the Letterman set. And then he did another 20 after that. Yeah, he did about a half hour and just gold. gold. I mean, just mind-blowing stuff. Yeah. And you and I were next to each other. We're punching each other. He's crying, laughing. Yes. He's killing. I mean, it was magical. It was like a great moment. I was proud to be part of. There's nothing funner or more exciting than when a comic is killing and you look around and there's 20 comics all dying. Yes. And everyone has that eye contact of like, this is special. Yes. And the fact that he's prepping for his last Letterman, one of the last Lettermans ever. Right. So Norm absolutely murdered at the cellar when practicing the Letterman set. And the night after this took place, Norm would go on to perform the final Letterman set on May 15th, 2015. Now, if you haven't seen Norm's last Letterman set, I'd really hate for this to be the first time you hear part of it. But what I would not hate is if you liked the video subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications if you're finding value in the content you're watching. I appreciate you guys watching the video. Anyway, there's no light way to put it other than saying Norm's last Letterman set is absolutely killer, brilliant, and jaw-droppingly hilarious. His delivery, cadence, timing, joke writing, and confidence are all on point. The audience is laughing, Letterman is laughing, hell, O.J. Simpson would probably be laughing if he took a break from killing people to watch this comedy set. The set is an absolute masterclass on stand-up comedy. Norm delivers his witty observations with his signature dry, sarcastic, and deadpan delivery in typical Norm. Norm MacDonald fashion. I'm going to show you some of my favorite parts of Norm's last letterman here. Back then, I remember if you wanted to take a picture, you would use a camera, <laughs> not a telephone. As a matter of fact, if you used a telephone, people would look at you odd. You'd be like, <laughs> just stay still like that. There is one country that worries me, though. Not Iraq, not Iran, not North Korea. The only country that really worries me is uh, the country of Germany. I don't know if you guys are history buffs or not, but... Uh, <laughs> in the early uh, part of the previous century, Germany decided to go to war. And uh, who did they go to war with? The world! <laughs> You could tell that this task was not taken lightly by Norm by any stretch of the word, and that he did everything in his power to make sure this final stand-up set on Letterman was the absolute best it could possibly be. Then after his jokes, Norm does something incredibly heartwarming. He talks about how he saw David Letterman live when he was just a little teeny bopper, and how there was one joke he loved the most that he would tell absolutely everybody. We would also see the first crack in Norm's armor when you could visually see him start to get emotional before telling the joke. I'll show this for you here. It's an incredibly touching moment. I remember Dave differently because the first time I saw him, I was 13 years old. I was living in... Uh, <laughs> David Letterman did this joke that I told everybody this joke. I love this joke. It still uh, stays with me. It was my favorite stand-up joke ever, so I'd like to do it for you if you'd like to hear it. Then after this, Norm completely drops the comedy act and opens up to Dave in a way that most casual fans of Norm and comedy have never ever seen from him. He thanks Dave for being such a big influence on him and also giving him an opportunity many years ago and continuing to believe in him after all these years of performing, and then he starts to cry. So anyways, I'd just like to say, I know that uh, Mr. Letterman is uh, 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 not for the mockish. If something is true, it is not sentimental. And I say in truth, I love you. Very funny, Norm. And thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you.
Norm Macdonald, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine growing up with a comedy hero, doing your late night debut on his late night show, then being so funny you end up becoming one of his heroes, and then being asked to do the last ever stand-up set on his show before it ends. That's enough to make a grown man cry. Any artist with a heart would sob their eyes out at an opportunity like that. The comedy world would absolutely explode in admiration for Norm's final set on Letterman after this. Seinfeld would talk briefly about this set on comedians in cars getting coffee, and how he had never heard comedians talk more about one set than this one. Your last Letterman with the World War I and II bit. I have never heard more comics talk about a bit. And I heard that you put a lot of work into that. Goddamn right. So many comedians talked highly of the set, and they couldn't believe just how good it was. Norm would also talk about the set with Larry King, and how he tried his absolute best to make it a great set, because Letterman's opinion meant the world to him. He also said how he didn't expect to choke up. I wanted to do stand-up, uh, because I did stand-up on his show uh, 25 years ago. And so, um, I did stand-up. And uh, I did the best stand-up I could possibly do. Letterman also talked about this moment at the end of the Netflix special, Nothing Special, where he shares how surprised he was about Norm being so sentimental. At the time when, uh, and like Conan suggests, I didn't know he was ill, so thinking about that moment, he, he must have known a great deal about it, what his future was and, and how long it might have been. Given the gravity of the situation to Norm, and him being the only person aware of just how sick he was, and how the situation was not improving for him, it really just makes Norm breaking down in tears even more sad and more impactful. It's one thing to be a good comedian, but it's an entire other thing to become so good at your craft that you end up switching places with your hero and becoming his favorite comedian of all time. The moments we got together from Norm MacDonald and David Letterman were truly one of a kind, and without the convergence of their paths, we would have never gotten to see such a beautiful and legendary moment of stand-up comedy. This set, among so many other things, cemented Norm MacDonald as a comedy legend, and his legacy will not be forgotten anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. All in all, this was the greatest late night TV set in history. Real quick, before you guys click away, I wanted to make a quick announcement that I'm going to be rebranding the channel from Nate Roscoe to Comedy Historian with Nate Roscoe. I think this kind of helps compartmentalize the theme of my channel a little bit better. So I wanted to make this quick announcement, letting you guys know that that is happening and that if you see this channel in your feed, do not be alarmed, it's still me. Just simply change the name, nothing else about the channel is going to change. Other than that, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications down below because that's a free way to help the community grow and you're supporting the channel and helping it build brick by brick, one subscriber at a time. I really wanna see if we can hit 100,000 subscribers this year, I think that'd be really cool. So please help me out and subscribe to the family today. Also, if you guys would like to, you can check out the Patreon page down below where I post exclusive content every single video early and you guys also get to play a direct hand in the direction my channel takes I also want to shout out all the members of my patreon we got Thomas Gill, Jay Murray, Crossblocker, Ethan, Karsten Brevik, Eduardo Ramos, Celia Ellis, Darren Lester and newly my boy Jack Morgan but yeah you guys are the greatest I appreciate you checking out the video and the channel take care of yourselves your friends your family and your loved ones I love you and I'll see you in the next video take care